What's up, guys? Ziggy here with Foutech Unlimited. It has been nine days and 21 hours since I posted a video. How do I know this? YouTube tells me. But if you're wondering why, it's because I did this and this. And the equivalent of these two is 300 holsters just for that, plus the other orders I had going on. I built well over 400 holsters in the time that I haven't done this. So, uh, I didn't film because I just, I needed to get them out and it was nuts, but we're back at it. And let's see here. It's nine o'clock at night, Wednesday night. And you know what we're getting right now? Over a foot of snow. You actually see on the camera right there, the snow's coming down. So it's going to suck when I wake up in the morning. Luckily, I don't have to go far from, uh, from my house. So, but we are going to build, uh, we're going to do, actually, I have two builds for the same gun. We're going to do an outside the waistband and an inside the waistband. I'll only film one of them because you'll get the gist of it. And I do a lot of uh, level two holsters. So we're going to do an inside the waistband for this particular setup, which is one of the two holsters I'm going to build. So what's the gun? HK USP 9mm full size. Now you're probably wondering, how the heck do you mount this light on there? Because there's no rail, right? Well, hmm, gee, what do you do? You can go online, you can go to hkparts.net, you can go to any other place really that does HK parts. I got this particular mount on Amazon because it's, uh, well, the best route to go. It is 60 bucks, and what this does is it sits inside this indent right here, and it puts a Picatinny rail underneath so you can fit any flashlight you want. In this instance, it's going to be the Streamlight TLR1HL. And we're going to build a right hand inside the waistband with the claw to handle just that. And then I'm going to go ahead before I take everything apart because it's, it's annoying to take it apart and then redo blocking and then put it back together. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do an outside the waistband level two with Safari Land. I'm just going to get them out. So without further ado, let's put it together. And then I got a plow. And just whoop, get it right on there. And you got this alignment pin. Goes right in the alignment hole, obviously. And you just tighten that up. Just like so. And obviously from there, we'll just mount the light on it. Gotta figure out which one. Oh, that's the Glock one. Oh, that's the one that's gonna have to be it. Because we can't go back anymore because the light will hit that guy and we don't want that. Tighten up, I had a phone call there. Alright, and there we are. I'm not sure if I'm a fan of this setup, but that's exactly how it's gonna go. So let's have some fun. I'm going to go ahead. I have this, uh, it's actually, it was a half inch dowel. And what I did is I flattened the sides and opened that up right there. So we can go ahead and throw that on and we're going to get this and just put it on right there. And then we'll go ahead and tape up the sides and do the rest right here. So not that big of a deal. And I feel like I should mention that again, like always, the heat presses are on one and two. I have both sides heating up. That way it's going to be nice and squishy and I don't have to worry about the cold foam sucking all the heat out of it because you'll get no definition, you'll get nothing whatsoever, and uh, it won't look as good and I'm kind of excited I just found a cupcake. Oh. Alright, back to the build. So here we are. Let's go ahead and get some more blue tape on it because you know I'm a blue tape hole. And it's starting to really come down and yeah, so joy. Actually, now that I think of it, to make my life easier, I'm going to have to move some stuff around so I can get another car in the garage. Because when I plow, playing musical cars with the 10 cars that I own, absolutely sucks. Now I got five in the garage, and I have enough room for one more, because I got four out there, so this shouldn't take long. So, if you guys didn't know, I have another channel called Faltac Garage. I don't post a lot to it at this moment because it's cold, it's miserable, because I'm rebuilding this CUDA, 
but I actually just scored a 5.7 Hemi out of an 06 Chrysler 300. So that is going to be on there. This is my chopped 54 Buick right here. I did four and a half inches off the roof, bink. And uh, so I got to move all this over so I can go ahead and fit a couple more cars in here for tonight. So this should work. But let's get back to holsters. Next step, very easy if you have the light widgets. Now I'm getting bombarded with messages. Yes. I'm going to supply these soon. Uh, a friend of mine who runs a machine shop, he has enough to do 14 more sets. So I will probably set those up on my website and limit it to 14. Once 14 sell, gone. And then that way I could uh, go ahead, order those in, and then get them out to you guys. He's actually working on them, so the wait's not going to be as long. But generally how it was before is I wait until there's 15 orders in, minimum. And then I go ahead and put the order in. That way it doesn't waste his time doing one here and one there. But you guys know I got a CNC now, which is right here. We'll do a video on that separately. And I will be making these in-house. I got material in. I just got to work on the programming, which is what I'm learning, which is why there's a delay on that. But let's take the widgets. Let's get on the gun. Let's go to town. All right, so I got my five layers of tape on each side. And I went ahead. Uh, when I do this, I like to put one very tight one over. And you'll notice uh, when the holster's complete, the Kydex will stick, well, it won't sink in here. And then it'll gradually sink into this one. So it leaves like a channel for the sight channel. And I think it looks absolutely pisser. So I'm going to keep incorporating that. But for now, I'm going to go ahead, throw these in. I think I actually, yeah, I made these, so these ones have slots in them, so they could actually fit down in, but that was for an HK, as you can see how low that sits, I would have to take these and cut another slot, maybe I could do that too, but I mean, that's pretty well, I could always cut a slot right there as well. It won't really affect anything that I'm doing. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll modify my set. That way we can get this holster looking as best as we can. All right. So there's that end. Markers suck here. There we go. And there's that end. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut a notch in those ones. And that is just going to make clearance for that so it sits flush. And then we're going to have to build up a little bit right there so they don't sink in. Kind of note to self, you notice how there's a little bit of a curve right here. That curve is from the heat and pushing down and whatnot. If you block underneath it, build in that gap, it's not going to cave in on you. And you could also heat these up with a heat gun, set them in your press overnight, and they will be flat again. So I do that with these. So I'm going to go ahead and cut a little channel in this with my Dremel and a router bit and make them work. Here's that little notch I was talking about, and that fits inside the trigger guard. This piece of blocking, that is there solely so it doesn't get pushed down in. So I'm just going to... Put a piece of tape there just to hold it in place because if you don't put anything in place and you move it around, it absolutely sucks when it falls out right when you're about to press. So we'll go ahead and throw that right there. That's going to go right there. Something right here just to hold it in place. All right. And now figure out some blocking here because that pushes it down quite a bit so we will do that using the back of the pencil lock it in place and then there's a gap right there and then we have that so what I'll do so the rest of it doesn't move All right, so we know end of it is right here. That pokes up. And then we have the controls right here. Jeez. There we go. Controls right here. 
and we have our safety selector switch that pops up and goes down so we're going to block that as well luckily there's nothing on the other side so i do have i mean i have blocking like this and that'll square it off and honestly that'll work just fine just like that and this is just an inside the waistband so you know but we kind of you know we want it to look pretty as well so I also have are these and again you can find these on uh, knife kits and holstersmith.com it's right underneath the blocking section under um, holster making tools and you can find it under blocking and with this I could just lay this I mean pretty much right about here because that's going to give us a, a pretty good amount and it's going to give us some aesthetics too so I like that. And then plus we're gonna come up and we're gonna we're gonna be right there. So within this inside the waistband, I am not worried whatsoever. So let's get that right there. Alright, there's that. And don't forget, I'm also going to wrap around too. Once we get this side on, and like the other side, I'm going to get a piece of short dowel. If I could find one that's already cut that matches. Looks about right. Throw that right there. Go ahead and mark mark that down. And then put that in its place. Right there. And this is going to be pretty much the same thing. Take that, block that all the way down. Like so. And we're going to go ahead and wrap it down and over. I like to tape these together because it helps me believe that they stay level to each other. Now, if you notice, I mean, we're going to have that same bump right here. It's going to bump down, go to the mount. That's going to add retention. So we could do one of two things with this. We can add another piece like so, so it matches all the way down, or we can go ahead and do that swooping one. Now, what I'm also going to take in consideration is the fact that, let's see here, uh, we are going to be going pretty much like this with the holster. And this is going to have an inside the waistband. So we're going to throw this. This is actually going to go right about there. So I am actually going to keep with this blocking. I'm just going to move it just a little bit up. And that will be okay with me. So I'm going to tape that in its place. And then once I find the blocking I need, like I said, we know that our holster line is going to be right here. So we are going to place this right about there. And let's throw a piece of tape down. Keep that guy from moving on us. But we have to put something underneath here. If we don't put anything under there, 
And then what's going to happen is it is going to, oh, let's do it this way. There we go. All right, all right. It will fall and then it'll be kinked on us and then it won't look right whatsoever. Now, all right, so now pretty much only thing left to do is we need to make a retention plate, which is just a piece of quarter inch MDF. I'll go ahead and do that off camera because it is kind of boring. And this is all set. Now, uh, what else, uh, other things that we can do is you can take this and put it here if you feel it's not large enough. And I'm pretty sure that this is uh, more than adequate to work with it. Now what I did is I actually just went on Google just to see what it would look like. Now I know uh, that is pretty tall. And it, it, it's, it's gonna be very close. But what I'm gonna do, that's gonna come up this way. And I'm gonna put that there for the safety to go in now let's see here safety is right there it goes up and then it flows down it doesn't go as high as we think it does so i'm going to lock that in place right there and that way it kind of gives us insurance that this holster will be tall enough in that location for what we need Now I'm going to go ahead and do that. Cut our piece of black because it's just going to be black. And then make the holster. Now when this comes out of the press, I'm going to keep everything as it is. But I'm going to remove that. And I'm going to remove that. And I'll install a Safari Land QLS. And the part to do the hood, which is this right here. And then I'll add extra blocking to this. That way we're good. Either that or I'll just add it just the way it is. And then... Um, add the other piece for the other end of the hood. So I'm gonna get that cut, we'll get it in the press, and next time you see it, it's gonna look like halfway being a holster. You know what, I lied. Sometimes you guys ask, how do I do it? So let's just show you real quick. So, you get a good working marker here. That ain't it. Yeah, that's better. This is quarter inch MDF, I get it at Home Depot. This is my trash can. I use it as a lid. Um, two foot by four foot sections. Home Depot. It's like 10 or 12 bucks. Okay. So I know I haven't done this combo before. So I am just going to lay it on. Hold it. And then I'm going to go ahead and trace around it. And then I'm just taking my Ryobi skill saw here, and I'm just going to zing it real quick. Found it a lot faster to do that than to bring it to the bandsaw. So. Now I'm going to cut this on the inside of the black line on my uh, scroll saw. And at that point, it is cut out. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this piece. And I'm going to do a test fit and see if I need to modify anything. This is fitting flat. It's tight. It's not falling off. This is perfect. This is exactly what I want. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a piece of tape around here. Get it right there. I might go a little bit smaller on this. It does not need to be this big. Um, however, I'm going to keep this because if you go too short, it will curve on you. Um, but doing it this way doesn't need to be this big. But I'm going to wrap a piece of tape around and go in the bezel. I'll wrap a piece right here and then I'll put a piece on the top and it'll be copacetic. But like I said, I'm going to cut this down real quick and then we'll tape it on, throw it in the press. Be good to go. And for future reference, I will throw these. I don't throw these out unless I have duplicates, then I try to use them. If not, I use them as Kidlin because it's New England and it's cold. But right there, USP 9mm full size, GG and G TLR1 with right there on the top. I figured it is so much easier to scan the top uh, to find out the one I need because I have probably a 
a few hundred, at least like six or seven hundred of these cut. So it is, it, it's pretty disgusting when I try to find new ones, but let's get it on there. I'm just going to cut a piece of black. Everything is up to temperature. We're going to throw it in the press and we're just going to do a little dance, and make a holster tonight. All right, guys, we are in the heat press, which means I now have 140 seconds left before I have to run and take it out and throw it in the press. But I wanted to ask you something because I change it up every day. What do you guys do? What do you have on in the background when you're making holsters? Put it in the comments below. I do one of a few things. I will listen to motivational speeches, which is why I work 20, 21, 22 hours a day. It is disgusting, but I need to to catch up. I will listen to, honestly, I love Judge Judy. So I would listen to Judge Judy and just listen to her new shows and just have a ball. I watch other YouTube shows, other YouTube videos. I absolutely love them. And of course, on that TV right there, that TV right there, not that one, but that one has internet. Uh, that TV right there, all have Netflix and Amazon and all that fun stuff on them. So generally, wherever I am in the shop, I could have something on. So if actually people here playing pool, I will throw them on with music because I have surround sound in this area. But what do you do? I will blast R&B. That's the music I listen to. I love 90s hip hop and all that stuff. And you know what? Honestly, lately I've been on like a classical kick. So cello, violin, piano. It just uh, makes you just want to build. But we got a couple seconds left. Tell me what you guys do because I'm always looking for new stuff or new shows to binge watch while or binge listen while I'm doing it. I got these awesome Bluetooth headphones that I listen to and it's just... I go to town, so nobody bothers me. I lock the door, I put my phone on silent, and I just listen as I'm going. And plus, obviously, filming for YouTube takes away from a lot of that because I don't want to get hit with copyrights. So, anyways, I'm going to throw that in the press, and you're going to see it in a sec. Oh, there it is right there. All right, ladies and gents of the YouTube world, we are now in the press. We have about eight minutes minimum, so I'm going to take this time to do this. Now, if you are new to this channel and you are new to holster making or even a veteran to holster making, see this wall right here? Minus the ladder. This wall, those three down there, this section right here, and this right here. These are all the pale horse molds I keep in house. I have another Eight coming my way and then I'm done buying for a little bit because it was like four or five grand just for everything but anyways if you are new to the holster world and you can't get your holster quite right I will sell you a shell for a fraction of what the holster costs so for example I have a Glock 17 with TLR1 and a 940 double stack heading out to San Diego California so we're going to be building that for him, just a shell. Literally, all I do is bend and send. That way you will, well, actually form and send. You will then heat up the sight channel, fold it around your firearm, add your hardware, and bam, good to go. Even if you're a holster maker, you don't need it for yourself. It's literally anything. You can go ahead and do it. I do it sometimes. I post online like, hey, listen, I don't feel like building this on foam. Anybody have a vac form can get me a shell, then I will finish it at my hardware and let it go after checking it and all that stuff. So food for thought, if you are new and you need shells, just go on my website. I have, once I get everything in, I'm going to update the list. That way everything is there. Also, if you notice, some of these have trim jigs, some do not. I am going to categorize them so that the ones with the trim jigs, I mean, they come trimmed and drilled. The ones without will be a soft cut just as a square. They'll be cut out. That way you can't duplicate them because it's not fair to the mold makers who spend their time programming, uh, having people just copy their design and selling it as their own. So I will not partake in that. I won't do it. So don't ask, which I have before and I've canceled their order because I'm not doing it because I don't want to piss off the people who make these because I still buy them. So I don't want to be blacklisted for that because it does happen in this world and I'm going to stick to my gun. So again, anything that I have vacuum, you guys are more than welcome to order. And honestly, that is the best way to support the channel, support anything. Um, a lot of people don't realize you don't have to buy 
merch and I mean yeah I have shirts I have decals all of that stuff but the best way to support the channel is buy a holster now I actually had two police departments actually sheriff's departments come out and uh, or not come out but email me for Narcan holders they're getting super popular I offer them so if you are a police department or a sheriff's department a law enforcement agency you guys want the hookup on holsters give me a shout I will get you a price and can get you hooked up plus I want patches so if you're a law enforcement agent Send me some patches because that's what uh, I collect in return, really. Anytime I help out law enforcement, I will get a uh, patch. And I, I'm about to set up a huge wall where I can put my collection of patches on display because it's a proud moment. But anyways, let's let's get to building. Enough talking. These cupcakes are good. Another perk, before we get to the holster, another perk on buying shells. I just finished these. We're about to pull that out of the press. Glock 17 TLR1 dual mag holder. Now, this gentleman, including shipping, only paid... $30 for the pair, okay? This holster, or this combo, will actually be over $110 on my store completed. So you're looking at making minimum $80 profit, well, $70 profit after the other expenses of uh, hardware. But uh, that's it, you know, a couple bucks on uh, a shell, not to mention the speeds at the time. So just food for thought because I buy a lot of stuff that I don't have from other vendors. So it's either pay $200 for a mold and wait three weeks or more or buy a shell and get it when you need it uh, until the mold comes in because I like to have the molds in house. But anyways, okay, holster time. All right, ladies and gents, here it is. Bada bing, actually, look at that. Look at that. So that's the inside the waistband version. Uh, I, it looks absolutely amazing. Nothing moved on me. Fresh channel, retention, spot on. And just, I have been called the foam king by quite a few people and this that's just awesome I absolutely love it and as you can tell check that out so you notice how flat that blocking is because we put the blocking underneath it and same with that blocking all under it so now we have to unwrap the holster or the kydex get it off the mold take off this take off this add some safari land blocking because I'm not going to undo this entire thing I'm going to go ahead and put that on there so we can make our tactical outside the waistband safari land compatible level two holster and that way we can finish them at the same time so let's get that going let's get it in the press and sadly i'm gonna have to do a two-part video as it's almost 11 o'clock at night and i have a lot of other things to do but while this was in the press i got two more orders out so that's good right, anyways let's get that going you ever wonder what the holster sees while you're working on it All right, now it is Safari Land time with the hood. Now, you remember, we have this. This is considered, I believe that's considered the spurred hammer because it's got the spurs on the side. But we know that's going to come down to at least here, which means we need to make it so we have plenty of room, which right there seems like plenty of room. So let's go ahead and drop that right there. Now... What we can do is what I think I'm going to do. I actually think I'm going to put this back where it was, which was right there. I'm going to mount that back. Now that came off when the holster, uh, when the Kydex came off. All right, let's put that in the spot. Now this is going to, again, guarantee that I have plenty of room for that safety. So again, this is going to match up with right there. So this is going to sit right here. Now, all I have to do is just put a couple little pieces under it. Now, if I put that there, that will actually help out. Let's do it this way, though. Beautiful. So let's take that, mark that down, which is going to be underneath everything. And again... That's going to go right there and drop that straight down. Up 
right. Now you guys know I like to poke the holes. That way we get the dimples and we don't have to worry about a whole bunch of other stuff. So, all right, now time for this. That's gonna be up a little bit. I think it might be better if I do that. Oh yeah, that's pretty good as it sits. Kinda high. Oh, actually, nope, that feels good. The only thing we have to do is put a piece of blocking right there. Lock this in place because the sight channel is so high on this that we need something. Now, to add to the rigidity, if we take something and put it like right there, going in between those two, it'll make this a lot stronger. So, maybe that right there. Put this in. Oh yeah. Like I said, that is going to cause a lot of strength in this holster. But I don't like the way that dips, so I'm going to sit and put something underneath that right there as well. Alright, let's figure out what we could put under here. Other than, actually... Probably a bigger piece. Uh, let's see here. Oh, actually, bada bing. Here we go. Like it was meant to be. Can't get any better than that. All right, now on this side, we are going to take. Oh no! That piece that's right here is the piece I need. So. Erase. Let's put this stuff back down. And that's the piece I need on the other side. All right. So it looks like we are going to have to do that again, which is okay. That means we can use a bigger piece. All right. Um, bah, 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 bah. I have a piece that I use. Oh, actually. That looks pretty damn perfect, actually. that right there let's put this here this is gonna come up hmm. let's go right there do I have something yeah, actually no it's just too big got that go right there and then that on top of it with that right there does that work? That would work. Okay. Let's lock that in place instead. Line that up. And 
let's throw one more down right here. Yep. All right. And then from there, this guy is going to sit right here. And of course, we need to go underneath it. And just like that. And I already have the piece cut. I never shut the ovens off. And I can't finish the other holster until I take this setup apart. So that's good right there. This is good right here. Let's get that other piece. Bada bing. Now that is in the press at 400 degrees for 37 minutes. I'm just kidding. It's in there for a little over three minutes. Uh, 100 and well, actually just under three minutes 140 seconds left on this one and it's gonna go in the press and then we're gonna finish this stuff or at least you're gonna see the finished video Tomorrow or the day after whatever it is today tomorrow Well, here it is folks. I just got my first sign that I need to be done for the day the alarm went off I grabbed the mold I grabbed the kydex I put it in the press without foam so, I stick it back in the press. Went and grabbed foam, threw it down there, and then put it in. It is now in there. It is tight. And we'll see when it pops out. And that is where I'm going to end the video. All right, we are out of the press. And I am out of time. I need to. There's like three or four inches of snow on the ground. So, I got to do this in waves. Otherwise, I'm gonna, I don't want to break my plow truck. Anyways, so we got our outside the waistband and our inside the waistband. Check that out. That looks absolutely killer. Again, foam game strong. And this is absolutely perfect again. So uh, on that note, I'm going to leave you to the end of our part one on this HKUSP with TLR1 and GG and g uh, rail adapter. And tomorrow, or after this video rather, you are going to see the part two. So I promised my little one, I have a nine-year-old girl, two of them, and she, you know, so when I get in from holsters, generally it's midnight or later, I'll make a snack. And I told her that a, a nice egg sandwich hits differently at midnight. So tonight, since there's no school tomorrow, it got canceled because of the foot plus of snow that we're currently getting hammered with. Um, I told her that tonight at midnight, we can have egg sandwiches on everything bagel. So that's what I'm going to go prepare for right now because you got to make memories and you got to live a little bit as well. But I will be in here all day tomorrow uh keeping warm and making holsters so shout out to you guys huge shout out to holstersmith and knifekits.com for proudly supporting this channel actually here's a little right here and i appreciate all of you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe if you like these types of builds and i will see you on the next one